All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is very simple, and uh, you know, uh, I see uh, a lot of comment from the Muslims, and always the comment, I find them very silly. And I encourage the Muslims today, and for sure non-Muslims, and for sure us as a Christians, to open our mind and to try to be a little bit wise, and not to be copy-paste people. Not to be copy-paste. What I notice about uh, Mohammedan people that they are copy paste, but they are not the only one is copy paste too. There's many Christians are copy paste too. We heard something, we repeat it. You know, we don't study it, we don't investigate. As an example, I will give you an example about the Christian being copy paste. Uh, the Christian they heard from somebody. Somebody told somebody one day. One day, somebody says about somebody. As an example, uh, somebody. Someday, one day, he said that Muslims are from Ishmael. And then you go to churches and you see the Christians saying Muslims are from Ishmael. Where this is coming from? We have no idea. <clears throat> Anyone ask for a proof? No proof. How you come to that conclusion? No idea. So this is how this is an example of how Christians can be copy paste too. Muslims, they are suffering from the same problem. Copy-paste. And copy-paste here mostly is, uh, I find it funny. The same as actually, the same those Christians who copy-paste too. It's funny because, you know, you, are, you should not copy-paste. You should use your brain. When somebody says something to you, investigate what he just told you. You just, you know, don't take it for granted. What if he is wrong? Forget about he is being a liar. He, it's possible, right? Because a human being can be corrupt. Human being can be mistaken. Human being can be uh, a foolish sometimes. So how we take somebody for a granted just for saying so? Muhammad, he said as an example, the Kaaba was built by Abraham. There is any proof? No. All the references say the opposite. Copy paste. All of them, they are copying one guy who said one thing one day. And why Abraham would go to Mecca? I mean, you know, in the old days, it's not a secret that people immigrate. And then now, you know, people immigrate for a reason, either maybe security or to do uh, to live better, right? So if we go now to the map of the Middle East, <clears throat> I will open it a second so if we go to this map why somebody he was living in an area which in Iraq which has two big rivers coming through the north of Iraq and he will immigrate all the way to the middle of nowhere in, a, in, a, in an uh, according to Muslim actually nobody lived there too not only it was not a town nobody nobody there I mean it's, it's empty <laughs> so why somebody and how somebody can risk and go from here to this uh, highlight give me a second From this area, going all the way to Mecca. People goes where it is. There is a reputation that it is a green and uh, better. As you see, this is a, here. It's a pure desert. There's nothing. There's nothing. If I make now a landing on Mecca, the land of Mecca, using Google, If we zoom in and we make a landing, what we will find in this uh, territory? I mean, what is there? Dead land. Nothing. Until now. Who in the world want to go there? What I will do there? There's nothing. There's no greenery. There's. I mean, it's a. It's a. It's a chain of uh, a, a crazy dead mountains. 
rocky mountains no grass no trees nothing so why somebody wanna leave from here a green territory where is there is rivers and move to the middle of nowhere where is nothing except death and he how he even can survive it i mean a guy and his uh, his a child or his children and his wife walking all the way in the desert crossing those mountains going all the way to to what to mecca i mean what is that and even the muslim they say that the one who came first it was hajar and her child imagine a woman not even abraham a woman alone that is copy paste that is copy paste People at that time, they live by what? They grow their animals. They don't have uh, companies they work in and uh, they don't have a supermarket to go and grab the food and come back. They, you have to have a greenery to live. Otherwise, you are dead. You have to have water, a spring of water to live. According to Muslim, the first time Mecca have a spring of water, it's because of Hajar and it was a miracle. So why she will go there? <laughs> so copy and paste. If we go to Jerusalem, you will see that this land is not really a desert. Actually, it's a beautiful land. I don't know any, any of you. I never been in Jerusalem, by the way, but I saw a lot of pictures. But you will see there, there is a civilization growing for very simple reason. They have a trees, they have a fruit, they have a greenery, they have a vegetables, they have rain, and even they have a snow. Let us try to land somewhere here to take an idea. I don't know if we can land here. Now, this is mountains. We cannot land. There's nothing to land down. Let us see what we have here. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Maybe, uh, maybe it is. Uh... Here we go. See, this is not a desert. This is not a desert. It's actually it's a beautiful place. So, why in the world somebody want to go immigrate to Mecca to do what exactly? What is the logic? Same time, if we ask the Muslims, why Muhammad was praying all the time to Jerusalem? Most of his life, since he claimed that he is a prophet, he was praying in the direction of Jerusalem. What he have to do with Jerusalem? If Mecca is the house of Allah and Mecca is the most important place for Allah so was Muhammad committing sin and praying to the wrong direction the answer is very simple In the beginning, Muhammad was trying to convince the Christians, the Jews, that he is believing in the same God they do. So he prayed toward Jerusalem, especially the Jews, because he lived between the Jews. Not in Mecca, especially in Medina. And when he gave up, the Jews would never believe in him. He decided to kill all the Jews, all the Christians, and okay now i do not need their jerusalem they will not believe in me anyway and then Omar al khattab he gave him advice to make money to switch to the kaaba uh We will not do the same. We don't want to be people of copy and paste. Neither you, neither me. That is not right.
always, you know, when we speak about a religion, and you are from different religion, you come to me with your own idea, and you try to refute me that your religion is better, and I understand that. But always I find the Muslims' answers are very funny and very silly, and far away from any connection with the topic. If we go and ask the Muslims, you Muslims believe in something called Tawheed. What is Tawheed? Tawheed. I mean, even the name is a stupid because Tawheed means unification. Tawheed means unification. How your God is one and you believe in Tawheed? If He is one, Because the second you use the word Tawheed, that's mean you are believing in a unification of something. Unifying something. Simply, the word Tawheed is supposedly the God of Islam unifying all the gods of Quraysh, the gods of the Arab. They have many gods beside Allah. This is what the Quran is saying. So Allah, He unified all gods together under His name. Now, if we say this is Tawheed, that will be nothing but paganism, have nothing to do with worshiping one God. Same time, if God is one, or there's two gods, or there's three gods, or there's five gods, I mean, who care as long as it's true or not? So, to make it simple, the Muslim, they say to us, we have one God. The Christian, they say we have one God. The Jews, they say we have one God. But obviously, my God is not the same as yours. And we need to examine your God and see if he can fit to be a God or to be God. God, but he is a foolish God, that's cannot be God. Have you ever heard of a God? He's a fool. Allah is a fool. Allah says that the women she have a sperm coming from her ribs. Allah he said the man have a sperm coming from his backbone. Allah he claimed that the sperm transform into a congealed blood. Allah, he claimed that uh, uh, the sun set in murky water. Uh, Allah, he don't even remember which one he created first, the trees or the stars. I mean, have you ever heard, okay, you have one God, but you have a foolish God. So I am really happy that you are saying to me, I have one God who is a fool. So if I met with somebody, and he says to me, I believe in 1,000 God, and then he present to me books, and those books are really not, they are not stupid. Oh, how I can say how I can answer him the 1,000 gods he have they are smart wise the one God you have is a fool so having one God having 10 gods having 330 God having 40 God is a silly thing because simply it's about is true or not it's not about how many they are so the Muslim he think he is proud I believe in one God I believe in one God but you have you believe in one idiot God Are you following with me, guys? Are we following? You want to explain to me Tawheed? You yourself, you do not know what Tawheed is. As an example, Allah is Samad. They don't know even what the word Samad means because this is an Aramaic word. A Samad is coming from Masmud, which means the collect, collect, the collection. How he is one, but he is a collection. How Allah is one, but he is a collection. And the Muslims, everyone, he give you his own interpretation for the word and every his own translation for the word. Let us show you. This is a chapter the Muslims always repeat for us. And let me show you how stupid this chapter is. Qulhu wallahu ahad, ahad here is not one. That's false. That's a big fat lie. Here we go. I will copy the word ahad in front of you and I will paste it in the search engine. And I will show you that every translation the Muslims they have for the word ahad is not one, it's one off. One from many. This is what I had mean. 
and to prove to you that this is what it's mean look what it says in the last verse ولم يكن له كف on أحد if أحد mean one how come in the same chapter it says none is comparable into him I had suddenly became no one which means no one of you you know what I mean so I had does not mean one the same chapter in front of your eyes the foolish Muhammad was copying the Bible oh you Israel your God is a God Echad is not one as number. Echad is one as a unity. This is why the Bible says that the man, he leave his family, his parents, and he live with his wife, and they will become one. Hmm? Muhammad here is a thief. He is copying from the Bible. What is in the Bible? And he copied the word echad. This is not, this is not, this is ahad. You see, you see how close even the word? All who Allahu ahad in, in the Hebrew, echad. It's the same word. Echad is a word to unify, not about numbers. And this is where Muhammad he got the word ikhad. Here the one is is about unification, not about one by number. And we have tons of verses in the Bible speak about ikhad as unification. And I'll give you an example how the man and the wife they get married and you know they became ikhad. And this is what happened when you have a thief who is copy paste and he himself he do not know what he is talking about your god is one but not one as number one as unity because this is the word echad they became one if you go to genesis Two, twenty-four. Do you see it? Do you see the translation? What happened here? We have two human, not two gods. They are even a human. Therefore, the man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined with his wife, and they shall become one, a chad. Unity. So Muhammad the thief, he stole, but by stealing, he got himself busted. As usual. If we copy the word Ahad, which the Muslim keep reciting for us, and we paste it in the search engine of this funny Quran, right in the front of your of, of your eyes, I will paste. Look how many times the word appear. Look how many times. All of them. وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَد. You see the word Ahad? It's the same exactly, the one we posted in the search engine what I had mean here anyone which mean any one of many not one he's not the only one there's one off translation chapter 2 verse 102 it says here and they don't teach anyone See how the word Ahad became anyone <laughs> in the translation? Forget about this word. 
it does go to different different verse chapter 2 verse number 136 وما نفرق لا نفرق بين أحد أحد. You see it? We don't differentiate between any, any of. Chapter two, verse one, thirty-six. You see? We don't differentiate between any. We make no distinction between any of them. This is Ahad. Do you see it? And we can go all over the Quran non-stop and you will see that the word come always in such a way. Chapter 2, verse number 285, Ahad. Read it. Ahad mean? We don't differentiate between any of any of I had any of any one which mean one off to use the word I had yet mean there is more there's more of you or you take it as in the Hebrew where it is a hard which mean unity So in a in a very simple study, we 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 discover that Islam based in fictions and stupidity. Nowhere in the Quran it make it uh, you know like uh, uh, it's you know like here if we say okay the Quran saying Allah is one and he don't mean unity, but that will be a problem because the Quran itself the word of Allah is not created. You see in Christianity. The word of God is God. In the beginning, it was the word, and the word was what God, and the word is the God. Not something beside him. Is God. In Islam, the word of God is not created. So now we have any created being. How many? Two. Allah and the word. You can right now search in Google and you will find that the Muslims believe that anyone who believe that the word of Allah is a created is a kafir. He is not a Muslim. Allah words not created. Do you see it? The Quran is the word of Allah. May he, uh, may he be exalted, is not created. So now we have none created Allah and none created the word of who? I mean, look how funny this, this cult is. You say that Quran or the word of God is the word of Allah, but yet is not created by Allah. So it's created by who? You know what I mean? Do you people believe in the Trinity? That the word of God is God? Do you believe that God and his word is one? No, you don't. So what, what we have now, we have a problem. We have a big problem. The one who says that the word of Allah is a created, he is not a Muslim. And actually, uh, uh, there's a uh, many many Muslim they've been slaughtered just for saying that the word of Allah is a created answer the Quran is the word of Allah may he be excited and not is not a created just to make it short we do not need to read the whole article So now we have two divine is the word of Allah is holy they say yes is Allah is holy they say yes so now we have two holy which are any created foolishness either you believe in one God 
and you're you know in the way you reject the unification or let us say you know you reject any idea of okay yes god is a, he is a physical being because remember in islam god is not spirit god in islam is not a spirit remember that while in the bible it says it clearly that god in the bible is a spirit in the old testament and the new testament there's no different god is a spirit From the first verse in the Bible, it says it clearly that there is God, not gods. We we believe as a Christians in one God. It's a lie to say we worship three gods. That's a big fat lie. Even the silly Quran confirmed that the Christians believe in one God. But Muhammad, because he is confused, he do not even know what Christianity is about. Read carefully with me, please. Chapter 5, verse number 17. The Christians are kuffar. They are disbelief. Who? Because why? Because they say that Allah is the Messiah. You see, you Muslims, you lie to yourself and you lie to the Christians and you keep spreading lies saying, we Christians believe in three gods. While your Quran getting you busted saying no, 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 don't lie about the Christians. The Christian believe that the Messiah, he is the God. And by the way, the Quran here is wrong. Because we as a Christian, we believe in one God, yes. But we believe in God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, one God. We don't say that the Messiah is the Father. So here Muhammad, he got it wrong, again. When somebody says to me, how that can be? God is one, but yet he is three in the same time. Well, you say to me, uh, I, I want to drink. You drink, you bring me what? You bring me water. Uh, water is one, but the fact is three. H2O. Is that correct? Even the source of life is based on number three, the water. Even the Quran says, We made it from the water every living thing. Hmm? We made it from the water. Every living thing. So what we will do now? And if you look at the logic of the Quran, how to refute the Christians about how and why Jesus is not God, it says if Allah wants to destroy Jesus, he can. Yeah, I can say the same too. I mean, talk is cheap. Isn't it, guys? Are we listening, people? Talk is cheap. I can say now, if I want to destroy the moon, I can. I, I, can, I can look at the moon and can destroy it. Talk is cheap. The question is, why Allah did not prove that he is God and he make his a threat as an example. I will give you. A, I will give you a, a threat. Allah he made to the Christians. Look at this. If Allah is a true God and he make a threat that you have to believe now before I erase your faces. Thank you for those who they are you know supporting us, and I know you do not need our thanks. يا أيها الذين أوتوا الكتاب آمنوا بما نزلنا إلى مصدق لما معكم chapter four verse number forty seven what what this verse is about it is one of the most funny stupid verses in the Quran proving Islam to be false why because Allah he threatened the Christians to believe in Muhammad otherwise he will erase the details of our faces and trust me I have all the details there 
and not a single Christian he lost his details so if Allah can threat and destroy Jesus well, how he could not promise to destroy someone less than Jesus, me and you. He spoke in the time of Muhammad, saying to them, Believe now. Believe. In what I have revealed to you, confirm that which you possess. And by the way, here, you will see the verse confirming that the Muslims, they lie when they say the Bible is corrupted because the Quran does not agree. The Quran says confirming what you possess. Do you see the word possess? Do you see it, guys? How the Muslims, they lie and they say our book is corrupted and then it says you confirm what we possess. I mean, it's clear. And this is your Muslim translation, and this is your Muslim website. Like if this is a Christian prince translation, they will see Christian prince as a liar, as usual. It doesn't matter what you say to them, you say to them, they say to you, you are a liar. So here, look what happened. Allah, he made a promise, if you don't believe in Muhammad now, we will do to you the same as we did to the Jews, and we curse them, and we make them pigs and monkeys. That's mean that this is not about judgment day because the pigs and monkeys transformation supposed to happen long time ago before even Jesus Before Muhammad So here's a threat nothing to do with the judgment day because the Muslim did might try to say to you. Oh, this is the judgment day That's a lie It's about I will do to you the same as I did to who to people who did did, did that to them in the past And here again, one of the funny things about Allah, that He cursed the Jews for breaking Sabbath and He made them pigs and monkeys. And I find this is hilarious. And I will tell you why. Imagine we have a God and this God he will transform you or transform you into a pig and monkey for breaking the Sabbath but he will not transform you into a pig and monkey for raping a child as an example I mean don't you see something stupid there why those people even the story there proving to us that Islam is nothing but a fiction stupid stories foolishness This is why I made the video today. The topic is the Trinity of wisdom versus Allah foolishness Ask them Muhammad Ask them hmm? Of the township that was by the sea how they did break the Sabbath and how their big fish comes came into them Visibly upon their Sabbath They on a day When they do not keep Sabbath Came they not into them. I mean translation is very horrible I will translate it to you uh, actually you know what I'm not going to translate it hold on I will open the interpretation of the Abdul so they will not say he's making things up fair Chapter 7, 163. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, brother. We have, Alhamdulillah, brother, we have a good religion. Brother, our religion, brother, is a very, uh, very smart religion. Yeah, we will see that in a second. And everybody will die laughing. <coughs> Please don't die on me. This is Ibn Kathir. This is not a Christian prince. Hmm? This is who? Ibn Kathir. He is not a Jew. He is not a Hindu. He is not an atheist. He is not a Buddha. He is not working for a Christian prince. And I did not pay him a penny. Because each time a Muslim leaves Islam because of me, they say I paid him. 
I will go bankruptcy if I do that long time ago tell them about the town which was by the sea supposedly it's an island of a Jew who live in the sea what is that in Hawaii what is that no problem when their fish come to them openly in Sabbath day so what the fish do visible in the top of the water so the fish every Saturday they are fishermen they live from fishing the fish they come and they play ballet hey, 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 we are here you cannot fish us today is Saturday Ta -la 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 -la. and who is the one making the fish come only in Saturday Allah and it did not come to them on the day had no Sabbath look at this game so those poor Jews they have fish only in Saturday and their fish does not come to them in any other day so how we can accept this to be from God Allah he says we made this as a trial so now those people are hungry and because they cannot eat they have to fish in Saturday and because they did fish in Saturday we made them pigs and monkeys how silly how stupid So Allah here, he claimed that he will do the same to us. In chapter 4, verse number 47. What he will do? He will erase the details of our faces if he did not, if you did not believe in Allah. Allah command the people of scriptures to believe in what has sent to them by the servant of Allah messenger Muhammad Okay, and he warned them Before we efface faces and turn them backwards my face is backward already And turn them backward meaning we put their faces on their necks on their backs oops and we make them walk backward Actually, right now, my brother, I am turning my back to the computer and I am not really facing the computer because my face is in my back. So if Allah is God and he can destroy Jesus, as he, as he said in the other verse, why he did not keep his promise and destroy the Christians and he did, he you know, just at least one. One, one, just one. This is why I said, talk is it cheap? Anyone can make a threat, says, I, my God, will make do it. Okay, here we go. This is Allah Himself talking, saying, I will go to erase your faces. And not only that, and verily, we have to put in their necks iron collars, reach into chains, so their head, heads are raised up, and we have put barrier before them <laughs> if you go to different interpretation you will see even things getting more funny how this can be from God you tell me So, you know, speaking about God, you can speak about any God you want. I mean, you can claim whatever you want. But how to prove your God is a different story. Your God is one, your God is two, your God is four. This is not my business. Your, your God is true or not? This is my business. When your God is an example, and this is here we go. This is your Islamic interpretation, not mine. Chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7. When Allah he says that the women have a sperm and it is coming from the 
ribs of the women the location of the necklace specifically how that can be God here we go you have one God okay I'm happy for you I'm really really happy for you brother you have one God who is an idiot is that what you are telling me so let the man see from what he is created okay how you are created explain to us Allah thank you you are the scientist you are a super super scientist he is a created from water gushing forth he meant what the sperm sexual fluid that's come bursting forth from the man and the women see Muhammad is expert and his God is expert in sexual uh, uh, form of liquids it's a gusting gushing a gusting forth liquid it's a sexual fluid as you see that's not my word come from who from the man and the women the those that will make the baby what is the gushing? what is the the, the the gushing fluid sexual fluid come from the women will make the baby read carefully does the child proceed from both of them remember the egg of the women is not a liquid and this liquid is a is a, is a billions of articles or items you know it's not just a one thing the egg is an egg the woman she have one egg she's not a fish if you Allah think that the woman she is a fish and she lay down like two million three million eggs in a liquid that would be funny then he explained where the sperm is coming from proceeding from the backbone of the man yes backbone yeah true scientists prove that the backbone is where the sperm is coming from meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women absolutely brother absolutely and now the Muslims to cover the shame they start saying uh, no it what is meant here you know like they come with tons of, of fabrication to cover this stupidity and by the way if you don't have insurance yet on your backbone I advise you to get one because what if your backbone is broken once I was in the beach and I saw something in the chest of a woman I thought it's a lotion I was naive at that time I was not too much knowledgeable in the Quran but after I learned the Quran brother I noticed that this woman she was a filthy woman she was having sex in the beach and she have her sperm his her cum in her chest because she have testicles there in all the world women they have a breast except in Islam women they have a breast testicles so your God is one but your God is dummy and he's foolish you have a one of a kind dummy stupid God who think the backbone is where the sperm is made oh my backbone is hurting So you give me a headache 24 hours seven days a week a week about my god is one i worship one god only brother but your god is crazy god your god literally is a crazy god your god believe in the flying carpets by the way my grandfather he used to have one but you know Trump he uh, stole it you know those Americans they steal everything brother flying carpet and speak the ant she said to the ant and Suleiman he laughed at her speech As I know, ants are deaf and the mute. The only way for them to communicate is vibration or chemical. They don't talk. And vibration here, they don't vibrate in the ground. They vibrate on the body of each other. And they don't understand each other because they hear the vibration or the sound of vibration no they are deaf they are, they are they are you know they don't hear anything but the vibration itself is the message or by chemical 
So Allah, the wise, the one God, he said, till when they reach the valley of the ants, one of the ants, she said to her friends, she is a warning. And by the way, here the Muslims, they make a big uh, uh, article about, according to science, brother, it's discovered, brother, that the one who warned the ants is a female ant. And brother, in Arabic, in the Quran, it says Namla. And Namla is a female ant, you idiot. In Arabic, any singular ant, we call it Namla. <laughs> this, this is the only word we have. We don't have Namla, male and female. <laughs> but because you do not know, they fool you. You do not know Arabic. Any bee, the bees, we call them Nahla. Nahla, it's a female. But but doesn't mean it's a, it's a male or any any bee is a single bee. We call it nahla, namla. Any fly we call it dubaba. Female. This is the nature of the language. This is not about gender. But because you don't speak Arabic, the fabrication is ready. They say, how the Quran knows that this is a female ant, brother? A, a brother, we told you why. Because in Arabic, the namla is always a female word for all kind of ants. Any singular ant, we call it namla. Any singular bees, we call it nahla. Any singular fly, we call it zubaba. The T at the end is added as a female for all those insects. But I have a question for you in the same time. How this ant, she knew the name of Suleiman. What happened exactly? I want you to translate to me in the language of ant, Suleiman. As long ants are in mute and deaf, how she said to them the word Suleiman? How she said that to them? Any Abdul? I'm serious. I want to know how she said the word Suleiman. That's amazing. I mean, that alone is a discovery. Is that how? If this is how the ant she said to the other ants that this is Solomon cannot be because the verse after it getting the Abdul busted it says that Solomon Solomon he lo were laughing at her speech at what her speech her speech not her uh, Brother, who is seeing who now? Who is fooling who? And look here, it says the verse. I mean, the story is really interesting. If you want to laugh, really, if you want some a cartoon, chapter 27 is really a cartoon movie. So the man he laughed and he smiled at her speech. Hmm. But hold on. Allah, he taught Suleiman the language of the birds. How Suleiman understanding the language of the ants. Just a verse before it, it says that Allah, he taught us the language of the birds. Maybe Allah, he think that the birds are ants too. So look what happened. 
Allah, he taught Suleiman the language of the birds. He sent him to school to study birds. And then Suleiman, he went in a journey and he started understanding the wrong animal. The ants. What's happening here? I teach you the language of the ducks. You understand the, the language of the elephant? I feel like I want to convert. Look like Allah by mistake, he sent Suleiman to learn supposedly the language of the birds, but he end in the anti-classroom language. Here we go, you have one God. But he is a silly, stupid God. Are you happy? And Suleiman, a brother, he said, brother, thank you, Allah. Thank you for teaching me, Allah, the language of the birds. Thank you very much. But you did not understand the language of the birds. You're hold on later he will speak to the bird hold on a verse after it chapter 20 Suleiman Suleiman is a king by the way who have an army anyone remember his army contain what you have one God right look at this God anyone remember the army of Suleiman contain what how many brigade three brigades who remember Birds, genie, and a human. Imagine you are a Trump, President Trump. Now he is going to send a million birds to attack Venezuela government. A king, his name is Solomon. He have a brigade of chickens. Uh, this is General Chicken was saying that I am going to meet the King Solomon right now. And he says he want to report to him how many eggs the chickens they lay down today, preparing for the coming war because those will become a cheek and they will go and attack the enemy. Hmm? Somebody's asking where we can find that he have an army of jinn and chickens. And here we go, it's in front of you. Chapter 27, verse number 17, same chapter. You have one God? You have one God. Now, this is your God, the one God you are talking about. You have telling us a story. Is, what the difference between this is this and the Lord of the Ring? An army of a genie. What is what is that? And then the bird he disappear where the bird goes where the bird goes we find later that the bird goes so he can look for a woman she, she have no hair in her legs all my life you see the reason I'm not married because I'm looking until now for a woman she have no hair in her legs all of them they are very hairy so the bird he disappear he is a big colonel in the army big colonel uh, let me introduce you to you the the colonel of Allah uh, the colonel which are hired by Allah those are the are servant of Allah anyway you know this is colonel al hubhub obviously he looked like a colonel we have to be honest he looked like a roman colonel so the one who come with this story, he chose the perfect bird. He is not even in the size of your hand. And this is the guy who is a minister. He's not only a bird. He is a minister of irrigation. And he is in charge of finding places to attack. And he is in charge of finding women who have no hair in their legs for a prophet Solomon. Should I salute him? You have one God. 
but your God is a silly stupid God so you give us headache about one God one God one God and then you come with this this is your God I'm really really convinced now that's it your God is the true God must be and look he's looking at me by the way I don't know why he's doing that do you think he's going to attack me with his peak so you give us headache about one God you have one God I mean you have the most cartonic God ever we can find Roman general uh, you want to compare aren't you uh, this guy is a is a thinker you want to see you want to compare between Roman general yeah okay I will show you Roman general hold on See, I told you they look the same. <laughs> Makes sense. I mean, just compare between them. They choose this bird and make a fiction story about it because it looked like he have a rank. I mean, look at his head. Obviously, he was uh, from the Roman. Isn't it clear? What's wrong with you? Why you don't see? Why you don't see? Why? Why you are blind? Why? You Christians, Jewish, Hindus, Buddhas, atheists. What's wrong with you? They are cousins. If they are not from one family, maybe. Look at this. The funny there's a the Muslim they keep saying to me in text you are a liar I'm showing you Abdul in front of you on the screen the story what liar about what <laughs> I mean it's amazing you show them the story in the front of their eyes it's written I give them the chapter number the verse number in the screen their translation their interpretation and yet they say to me you are a liar Muslims, do you know how many Muslims leave Islam because of my videos? You yourself, you will leave Islam. I mean, there's no way. A person, he have little brain, he will stay believing in such a one God who tell us such one story. Hmm? I mean, what a story there. <clears throat> look at this story but the most funny part I like actually about this story is the Afrit anyone knows what Afrit who knows what Afrit is I don't know the translation here stalwart I don't know what st st stalwart is that correct what stalwart mean Afrit is a genie but he is different kind of genie uh, uh, he's called Afrit in Arabic because supposedly he is so fast, extremely fast. Uh, let me show you how the Afrit look like so you can get an idea if you are thinking to convert to Islam, brother. I think more of you, many of you will convert today. Afrit. Here we go. Let me... Let me uh, introduce to you Mr. Afrit. This is how in in, our, uh, in Islamic movies they picture Afrit. This is how he looked like. He's bald. He have like weird look, you know. This is Afrit. He's big. I don't know if you saw like a movie like uh, Aladdin 
where he have a uh, what they call it uh, the candle so he 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 uh, wipe the candle from the dust and then afrid come from the, the genie you call it genie in the bar right this is the afrid the story of the afrid is coming from there but this afrid have something special about him he is so fast extremely fast not like the one you see in the in the hori Buter story you know this is very very fast afrid extremely fast this is why you see here in the verse in the quran the Afrit, he said to him, if you want, I can go and bring you her throne because the, the bird, he described how big her throne is. I can bring you her throne before even you blink your eye. You see how fast this Afrit is? Brothers and sisters, I advise you all to convert to Islam right now. Only Allah, he tells us stories about the Afrit. Let me see if I can find you a better, better, better picture of the Afrit. Hold on. When I was a kid, the TV always have movies about Afrit, but there's, there's, those are old movies. They are not doing them no more. I miss them really. The Afrit, he come from the container and then he says to you should big look big which mean what do you want from me will happen right now <clears throat> yeah this is like cartoon about it here we go like there's many cartoons but this is exactly what the afraid he present let us let us show you in the screen hold on <clears throat> that's a nice uh... do you see what I've read I mean how in the world do you believe that this is God and God is telling you this your God he believe in the Afrit coming from the, the from the ball and he is in control by by Suleiman this is the Afrit <laughs> so this is the Afrit who said to Suleiman, "Do you want me to go and bring her chair for you, her throne? I am truly, truly convinced. I I don't know. I I, I think by the end of the day, I'm going to convert to Islam." By the way, let me tell you the, the, the news the Muslim one day will say and count my words one day Christian Prince will die all of us we will die anyway today tomorrow who care I'm a believer I am not worried about it but one day Christian Prince will die and the Muslim they will say Christian Prince converted to Islam a second before he go to to to, to grave brother anyone is famous anyone it doesn't matter who you are they say he converted to Islam before he died brother for sure, I will convert to Islam before I die. Are you kidding me? Hello? I want to have a freed. I want to have a freed. You know, here I have a complaint to Allah. I mean, why you don't provide every citizen with a freed? You put him in the ball, you wipe the ball, and then he come out, he says, what do you want? You say, go to him, go and get me a grocery for free. I mean, why you go to work and why people, they just, you know, build for me a house. Who is the one who built for Suleiman his palaces? Anyone remember? Who knows? Who is the one who built to Suleiman his palaces? Builders, normal builders, no. Afarit. Genies. And into Suleiman, chapter 30, 34, verse number 12. 
and into Suleiman we give the wind therefore morning course uh, here we go this is the flying carpet by the way by the way flying carpet is true me myself I used to ride it uh, but I told you Trump he took it all of us we are Middle Eastern we have a flying carpet you go in the street boom bomb explosion here we go flying carpet everybody's flying we can make your dream come true go just to the Middle East go to Somalia brother So we give Suleiman the control of the wind. What does that mean? You go to the interpretation, it says that he have a flying carpet. We can show it if the Muslim want me to show. Wherefore, the morning course was a month journey. By, by the morning, look how fast the carpet is. I mean, why you don't want to believe in Islam? What's wrong with you? He would go, we have one God who believe in the flying carpet. You stupid idiot. How dare you to reject this religion? We are the only religion, brother, who believe in the flying carpet. Okay, a Muslim saying to me, you're a liar. Okay, hold on, I'm a liar. Okay, as usual, here we go. Chapter 34, verse 12. 34, 12. Okay, this is Ibn Kathir. This is who? Ibn Kathir. Is that Christian Prince? No, this is Ibn Kathir. Read with me, brother. <sighs> he subjugated the wind to him so it would carry him, carry his carpet. Guys, does it say carpet or I'm making things up? Is the text clear or it's small? Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. Does it say carpet? And by the way, the Islamic translation for Ibn Kathir in English is big fat lie. They try to make it look nicer. If we go in Arabic, it's going to be more hilarious. 600,000 chairs in the top of the carpet. His equipment, camels, horses, donkeys, soldiers, tents, the whole the whole country is a flying on top of the it's not a flying carpet for Suleiman only if you think this is a flying carpet of a one guy you're wrong the whole nation is flying in the top of the carpet let me see here if they show uh, uh, some honesty in the translation hold on uh, see it's gone where is the where it says he carry his equipment and his army? I don't see it. I don't see it. Mm, no. It just says here. May peace be upon both. He subjugated the wind to him so that he carry. His carpet uh, it would, it would carry his carpet one way for a month, then back the next month. Al Hassan al Basri said he set out from Damascus in the meaning, landed, and he ate a meal and he flew from Istikar and he spent the night in Kabi. I mean, this guy is going like Tokyo, he's like he's mission to you old towns. Okay, he he he, he have a breakfast in Tokyo. And he have a uh, he have a lunch in uh, Washington D.C. and then he got his a snack in uh, Jordan. All right. Yeah, but I don't know where it is. It doesn't say anything about uh, where is his equipment and our, our army. It's gone. I don't see it. I don't know actually. You know, I saw it in the same website before. I mean, how is the it's up here? They, 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 they do like a, they change it, how huh? they took it off, so we will not laugh. Hold on, I'm not going to let it go. I don't accept, I don't accept. Give me a second.
They are here to expose deceptions and lies. You cannot fool us, and you hide it, you liar. Same on you. Okay, 34, 12. I will go to the Arabic, in the Kathir in Arabic. But let us see here first. This is Tafsir al-Jalalain. And we dispose for Suleiman the wind. Okay, no one journey, blah, 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 okay. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing here. Hold on. See, they lie. No problem. No problem. Ibn Abbas. Okay, journey. Okay, no, it's still not here. Let's go to the Arabic Ibn Kathir. The same verse, Ibn Kathir in Arabic. Okay. Okay. Let us see. I cannot find it here. Hold on. I'm not going to give up. I have to find you. <laughs> I don't like to say something without finding the reference. Uh, <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it in English first. Hold on. Let us see. Here we go. Here we go. You see, I don't like to mention something without proof. Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir. Do you see, guys? You see Ibn Kathir? We don't lie. This is Ibn Kathir. Okay. Let us see what it says. During his time, horses were the common mode of transportation. They were very, etc., and it carry blah blah blah. Okay, and then, and then hold on. Uh, And here the story of the end. Hold on. Let us see. Let us look for the carpet.
Uh, I have a video by the way about it they try to delete but they cannot I have it already recorded in their screen their website Mm -mm -mm. anyway I will post the link for you guys you, you tell me if you find it in that link let me know if you find it where I'm not going to uh, waste the whole time just trying to read the whole article but it should say that Suleiman he carried his 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 equipment carried by the flying carpet including all his army all his stocks all his men all All right, let us see. Any Muslim have an objection? Let me show you this reference here so the Muslim will not say he did not provide us with reference <clears throat> <laughs> you should see what I'm reading. Uh, I, I found something, but it's a, like a BDF file. Anyway. Uh, how I can open all this, the book. You see the problem you click in it it open a pdf file and then it, it you know it doesn't give you a chance to uh to search you have to download the file i, I don't i don't download files from the internet like this so here you say it says that you have a flying carpet uh, hold on that the genies they made for suleiman a carpet from silk with colors and have words in it written by gold and he carry on it all his army and all his animals and all his horses and all the human genie beast and birds all right so to make it simple your god is one god I really I cannot I cannot say anything anymore but your God is the most silly God ever let us see if we can get more reference
let us go here this is the this is the problem when you, you know you speak to people who don't speak Arabic then you have to prove everything you say in English you know Hear the story about this woman who entered the place where she is a queen. And because the shaitan, he don't want Suleiman to like her because she have no hair in her legs, as the bird he told him, when she left her legs up, the shayateen, they made the legs of this woman hairy like a monkey. Is that true, Muslims? Chapter 27, verse number 44. You don't believe me? Let us see the interpretation. 27, 44. Let me go to English. And look here, not only they made her hairy, they made her look like she had a legs of an animal. It was also said that he entered the place of the hallway. This was a transparent white glass floor underneath which flowed sweet water and contained fish Solomon had it made when he was told that her legs and feet resembled the shank of a mule <laughs> and when he saw so it she supposed to, which mean he made her he made her uh, she think this is a pool so she have to walk in the water but the fact is not really a pool so she have to lift up her skirt because he want to see her legs so supposed to be a pool of water so she she breathed her legs to wade through meanwhile her legs feet were in fact fear he said to her it is a hallway uh, bathed smooth with the crystal etc 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 and then she said my lord i indeed i have wronged myself by worshiping the other etc 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 Different interpretation. See, so, see, Suleiman. Suleiman, he like to see legs of women. He want to see her legs. Is it really have uh, legs of a, of a, of a, of a camel or a, and a goat? Uh, if we go to Ibn Kathir, let's see what Ibn Kathir want to say. Twenty-seven forty-four. All right, this is the Mika theory. So when she entered her, uh, the place, but when she saw it, she thought it was a pool of water. So she tucked up her clothes and covering her legs. Suleiman had commanded the shaitan to build for her, for her a huge place of a glass beneath which water was flowing. Anyone who did not know the nature of the building would think it was water. See the trick? See the trick? So Suleiman, he made her think that she is going to walk in the water, but the fact it was a glass and the water is underneath and there's fish. <laughs> but in fact, it was a layer of glasses between a, 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 a person walking and the water. And then, I didn't show the rest. Yeah. Most is gone. A anyway, I mean, all of this is hilarious. It's madness. It's stupidity. How in the world you come to me with worshiping one God, but your God is nothing but a fairy tale story teller? Not only that. If you notice with me, 
the Muslim they say that having idols are haram right having idols are haram but look Suleiman in the Quran who is a prophet of Islam he was ordering his genie to build for him synagogue with statues do you see it chapter 34 verse number 13 how he is a Muslim prophet how Islam is against his statues and then how he is ordering the genies to build the statues don't ask don't tell you don't know, know what statues you don't know really search Google Statues, statues, this what statues. Here we go. Huh. Statues. Why statues in the house of Allah? Allah is ordering Suleiman to build the statues and the genie they are building it for him. Don't ask. And then here, actually, the verse after. Anyone remember what this verse is about? How Suleiman he died. Sorry, uh, David. The dead of the death of Suleiman and the death of David. Suleiman when he die because he's a king he's in charge Allah will not make those who hate him know that he die so what he did Suleiman he die holding a stick in his hand and because he was holding a stick He dies standing and nobody noticed that he is dead. Is that true? Muslims, is that true? I am going to die standing and I will open my camera live in YouTube for the coming century and nobody will notice that I am dead. And how they notice that he is dead, anyone remember? How they notice that he is dead? Suleiman, he was using the wrong stick. He was using a, a stick made from uh, uh, wood. Never use wood, especially if there is a, a termite in the area. I mean, come on, Suleiman, you never heard of termite? The termite, they ate the wood of the stick, and then people did notice because he failed. Tafsir Ibn Abbas, chapter 34, verse number 14. For Solomon, Solomon died and remained standing. That's normal. For a year. For how what? For how long he was, he did, he, he died standing. Hey, Abdul, are you there? The guy, he died. And he is dead standing for a year a year and nobody noticed and nothing showed his death whoa true story the death of Solomon to them save creeping creatures of the earth <laughs> a wood worm which went away his staff Solomon, Solomon, brother, I told you, buy treated wood with chemical. They will not eat it, brother. I mean, why, Solomon, you do that? If that piece of wood is not a wood or it is a special kind 
kind of wood treated by chemical now until now Solomon will be standing I believe in one God who teach me that there's a guy his name is Solomon he died and he was holding a stick in his hand and because of that nobody noticed that he is dead for a year my God is one God his name is Allah brother and then the termite the worms the woodworm they start eating his stick and then he fell and when he fell to the ground the jinn so clearly had how which means now they knew that he is dead the jinn and the human being so clearly that he they do not know the unseen I suppose the Allah now he know. <laughs> I mean, look at this story. So, and and what is the wisdom of this? Allah He made Sulaiman die in the stake for a year, so they will not know and they will not go rebellion. Okay, why Allah not make him live like a year longer? <laughs> oh boy! Somebody saying to me, "Do you dare to debate with Zakir Naik, my friend?" The question is, do he dare? Do you dare? What is your scars? You know, we have our Skypes open 24 hours, seven days a week when we go live on air. And where are they? And I made, by the way, I changed this uh, dummy, Zakir Naik. He said, uh, I don't know if this is assistant, but this is Facebook. They said to me, he have no problem to debate you, but you have to bring with you, I think he was in Bangladesh, 2,000 viewer. You have to provide 2,000 viewer. Yeah, who wanna go with me to Bangladesh and I will pay for two thousand ticket? And who is Zakir Naik, by the way? Zakir Naik is an idiot. He's stupid. He doesn't know anything about Islam. They are Zakir Naik. Why a woman she isn't a prophet of Islam? Do you know what he said? Brother Tita, the Tita they ask a question. Why in Islam we have no prophet to the women? I confirm to you for the all in Islam there are no women to the prophet. And the reason for that is very simple and very logical. Because if a woman to become a prophet, you have to lead the congregation. And if you lead the congregation, you have to do to do and we do. And you have to bend over. And if you bend over, that will disturb the congregation. Thank you very much. Translation for the Urdu English. There's no woman in Islam, she's a prophet because if she is leading the prayer, she will bend down and everybody will look at her ass and they will forget about Allah. This is the answer of a scholar. They asked Zakir about the word Hur, a woman, she asked him, why in Islam the woman, she will not have 70, 70 uh, version as Muhammad uh, promised the man. He said, the third of the Arkham question, why in Islam the word Hur is a promise for the men to have a chameleon? First of all, the word Hur is a plural one. It is not a male or female. Would mean it is male or female, it doesn't matter. Would mean sister, in the heaven of Allah, you will have 70 Hur in Allah. What? She will have 70 men who will F her? This is your scholar, the one is asking me to debate him? But the Quran says it clearly they are females. The point they will lose their virginity when they have sex. Chapter 55 and verse number 56, chapter 55, verse number 74. And in Arabic it says Yatmuthahunna, which means they are females in Arabic. This is a, this is a noon in Arabic. We call it noon in Nuswa, which means the letter N, N, N like from Nancy, for females. The second you see this letter additional to the word at the end, that's mean this is a female. Yatmuthahunna. Yatmuthahunna. And you idiot, it says they're husbands. How they are men. And they have husbands. I mean, this is the scholar you are telling, telling, telling me that he is a guy who can debate me. And by the way, here the translation is absolutely false. They say no genie, no man touched them. Doesn't say that. Let me change the translator. Look. A Muslim translation, not my translation. Just to get them busted. It says that no man, no genie, had 
F them and made them lose what is inside their vagina, the skin, which will make you lose your virginity if you're a female. Do you see it? Yet the stupid Zakarnaik, he says the word whore is for male and female. Right? What do you think? Any Abdul? You know, always when we uh, when we ask a Muslim a question and he have no answer, it he says, "Why you don't debate this guy? Bring him." I mean, why you are asking me to debate him? Bring him. Surprise, surprise. I am open to debate anyone. You know, I mean, you know, I was receiving calls even from those who they are. I mean, kids. I never say no to anyone. Doesn't matter who you are. Right? Doesn't matter who you are. I don't care. Uh, somebody saying to me that in the Bible, in the but in the book of Judges, uh, uh, Samson he cut a three hundred fox. Is it impossible to cut to capture a three hundred fox? <laughs> this is a fairy tale. They light fire on them and they let them go in the field, and the fire spread all over. You can say whatever you want. Capturing 300 fox is a fairy tale. Why? Why? Why it is a fairy tale? Are you saying in the time of Solomon there was only two foxes, you and 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 the, and the other one, and you and you and your dad? Is that what you mean? In the, in the time of Samson, there's only two foxes, you and your you and your dad. So what the, what the problem with 300 foxes? We can change the number for you if you want. We make it, uh, yeah, we make it a thousand. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so the point of what we saying today you keep telling me about one God, one God, one God, but your God is a silly, stupid God. You have one God, but he is not wise. You have one God, but is a stupid. You have one God, he don't even know how the earth cre created. You have one God, you do not know how the baby created. As an example, Muhammad, everything he said is coming from Allah. When your God, he said, the sun set in murky water, and the Muslim, they try to defend that. They say, oh, this is how it appeared to, to Zulqarnayn. No, that's a lie. That's a big fat lie. Quran is so clear. Read with me carefully. Allah is talking until now, not Zulkarnain. Until when he reached the sitting place of the sun. He reached what? Where is the sitting place of the sun? The guy, Allah, he gave him the way. Allah gave him victory. And then he stopped where? Until he reached. The sitting place of the sun, but this is a journey of many years, not a day or two. The guy supposedly he controlled the earth from the east to the west. This is what the Quran is speaking about. Ask Allah where is where is the location where the sun set? Where is that? And he found next to it people who live there. And he found it sitting in the murky water. The Muslim today, to cover the shame of the Quran, they say, Oh no, 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 no. This is how it appeared in the eyes, in the eyesight of this guy, Zulqarnayn. Lie. Let us get you busted. The 
This is your prophet explaining the verse. I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah, S A W S F M, whatever is that means, radio, who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting. He asked, Do you know where this set? I said, I replied, Allah and his messenger knows best. As usual, always they associate the knowledge of Allah with the knowledge of a man. His name is Muhammad. And by the way, this is Sahih chain hadith. So they cannot say to us, This is weak and this garbage, you know. I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. He said, Who? He who? Muhammad. It's set in a spring of warm water. So you have one God who believed that the sun set in the murky water. Nice to meet you. I'm not going to give uh, the, the, the video longer. Uh, no, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to stay longer. Really, I have things to do. Uh, but this is enough to cover the topic and to show that the debate is not really about the Trinity. The debate is about your God is exist or not. Trinity is just how we as a Christian believe that God nature is. God, He taught us about Himself. Still, we believe in one God. But that will not be a problem. Let us say somebody believe in 1,000 God and they are exist. Then he is right, I'm wrong. If they are exist, they are exist. So having one God or two God or three God, it will not make any difference. The question is, is your God is exist? They are saying my Skype is not open. Yes, my Skype is not open for today. And, you know, we want to debate. If anyone want to debate me, we will not debate kids no more. We will debate, you know, I have thousands of videos answering anyone they want to call me, right? If you are a scholar, text me your 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 page in Skype. I will open it. Text me in Skype. Text, sorry, text me in, in Facebook. I will check your page. If you are really a person who can debate me, claiming to be someone, then you are welcome. Is that fair? Muslim, they keep complaining that Christian Prince is debating kids. Who of you here is a person, he is a scholar? He have the courage to debate me. Anyone? Right now? Not tomorrow? Who of you he is like a person who have an Islamic center. He have a PhD in Islam, something you know. So they will not say I did beat an idiot. Right? Yeah, we want to verify the person who is. is you know, when the guy he said to me, "I want to have my sheikh to call you." You remember what happened to the sheikh? Go and watch it. He was scattered, and until now, they cannot glue him together. What happened to the head of the Islamic Shia in USA, Hisham al-Husseini? Until now, no glue can put him together. What happened to Dr. Z Dr. Nabil Baikli and Imam Malik Sar? Go and watch the debate and laugh. What happened to Dr. Rohi? So we don't, you know, I'm not debating kids. Like you say to me, okay, guy, he's a, he's a 40 years old. He's a kid for you. I don't know what that kid means. But you are claiming that because he don't have a knowledge, so as as if you are the one who have a knowledge. Give me, bring your scholar. We offer even those kids who go in a speaker corner, like Mimi Hijab. He run away. Correct, guys. Did I challenge him many time? He run away. Uh, the guy, his name Wal Ibrahim. One of them they want to debate David Wood, but nobody want to get close to me. A brother Samsi, Samshi. All of them, they want to debate David Wood. The second, Shabir Ali. Shabir Ali, he, we set up a debate with him in ABN TV. After he learned that the one he will debate him is a Christian prince, he took a hike. You Muslims are running away. If we go to the comment in this video, 
or you will see how many Muslims saying I'm a liar. I'm showing in the screen what I'm saying. You're a liar. I am a liar, or your prophet is a liar. The sun set in the murky water, hot water. No wonder the sun is hot. I was wondering where the sun is hot. Now, now I know. So, my friend, to make it simple, you might disagree, you might agree with the Christians about what they believe, but we have the amazing wise God. Compare any speech Jesus said with the best you have in the Quran. And you will find the Quran is the most silly, stupid book ever. And we cannot compare anything Jesus said with anything Muhammad he said. And we compare? We cannot. Choose any, anything the best you have. You can't, my friend. I feel sorry for you. You are believing in a funny, very funny, weird God. It's a joke. It's an insult to mankind to believe in such a God. So you want to please the wise God, the Messiah, with the funny God who tell us most funny, stupid stories ever. I will give an example of Jesus speaking. Shall we? Can you tell me if Jesus speak as God or he speak as a man? Matthew 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath not lost his savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, 
ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come, and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Here I want to stop, and I want to ask you, Muslims, isn't it your prophet who allow you to do muta? Isn't it your prophet who was staring at women asses and he got horny? While Jesus saying, don't look at the woman, she is not yours. Your prophet, he allow you, and not only that, your prophet, he claim that adultery is a destiny written to you by Allah. Written to you by Allah. How that can be? The prophet B-B-B-U-H-F-M-G-G said, Allah has written the very partition of zina, zina mean adultery, which man will indulge. If you do adultery, it is not your choice, it's Allah. If you get horny because you saw a woman, she is walking in front of you, that's because Allah, he made that happen to you. So what Muhammad is saying, you are going to commit adultery as Allah decide for you, not what you decide. Do you see it? Am I saying something not there? I'm giving false translation? This is your translation. This is your translation. This is your hadith. This is your website. And it is sahih. So when the Muslim they say to us that adultery is forbidden in Islam, it's a lie. Adultery is a fate of Allah. Allah, He likes you to do adultery. He decides for you before He created you how much adultery you would do. Do you see it? Allah fixed the very partition of adultery which man will do. And you cannot escape from it. Do you see it? Do you see it, Muslims? So why you stone a person for adultery, you coward? If you believe that this is the destiny, stone Allah. Is that correct, guys? If Allah, he is the one who made me an adulterer, then why you want to stone me? Stone Allah. And if I cannot escape from it, which means why I am going to be punished. No, my Quran translation is not really complete. I'm going to slow in it because I'm being careful in translation. Have patience with me, guys. So do you see, guys? Why you punish a woman for adultery then? Why you punish a man for adultery? This is, the, this is a crazy cult. If I cannot escape from what Allah wrote for me about how much adultery I will do, you punish me for what you decide for me before you created me?
This is why I say, okay, you have a God, but you have a crazy God, you have a silly God, you have a foolish God. What kind of religion is what the what kind of cult this cult is? I mean, it's full of contradiction, stupidity. So you bring a woman and you stone this poor woman, but Allah is the one who decides for her to take off her panty and have sex with a stranger. And then we punish her for what Allah decides for her. Where is justice? Where is justice? No justice. This is a cult. And the cult is based on nothing. And they and here you notice, by the way, Muhammad in different in the Quran he says that Allah He gave him a privilege. All of it is about sex and money. All the privilege of Muhammad is about sex and money. The best of the booty, the fifth of the booty. Any woman she wanna give herself to the Prophet, all of them. Muslim can marry only four except Muhammad and limited number I mean all the privilege and not only that Muhammad made verses in the chapter of al Ahzab saying any woman she can give herself to the Prophet so he can if her all cult leaders they share one thing they are after money and women who follow and believe in them all of them You might find a priest is a child molester but he is a priest of the devil not a priest of Jesus Jesus says it's better for you to put a milestone in your neck before you harm the little one that is Jesus the Muslim they say to us how Jesus can be God but yet he came to earth as a man but how he can be just a man he never commit adultery and he never commits sin and he never proven of sin and not only that, as you see, he did not get married and have kids. While your prophet was busy making chapters about his penis, Jesus was busy guiding us to his kingdom. Even Muhammad, when he speak about privilege, Allah he gave him if you have my book six and Allah you will see that one of the privilege of Muhammad which is very funny proving to us again Muhammad to be a, a false cult leader that Allah will give him the power of 40 men of the people of heaven but every man of the people of heaven will have the power of 100 men in earth that's mean Muhammad he will have the power of 4,000 men in heaven for sex this is God promise God he promised Muhammad to have a power of 4,000 men for sex in heaven all cult leaders they share the same thing they try to seduce you by sex by money by you name it I mean whatever it can seduce a, a man or a woman endless penis 70 years orgasm power of four for you know, 40,000 men in heaven your penis will never go sleep have you ever heard of a God he promised people that their penis will never go sleep what is that what kind of God is God Allah he sent a message to Muhammad saying your penis will not sleep. This is God teaching now. If this is God teaching, so what is porn station is? It's like a commercial for a Viagra. My friend, one sentence of the Messiah, the Christ, my Lord and my Savior, is enough to get Islam busted. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And this is the fruits of Muhammad. 
This is the fruits of their God, Allah. I do not need to read tons of books. I do not need to study to be have a PhD in Islam. Even though I know more than all of them, they do claim have a PhD. But just one page of this cult is enough to prove to me that it is a cult. The Messiah, he said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. And the heaven of our father is not where penises are going crazy. The heaven of our holy God is holy. This is why the Bible says that be holy like your father, not be a scumbag holding your penis going around with it. If you remember once, we have a debate with the Muslims. We spoke to many of them, as you know. And when we asked them about heaven in Islam, what the Muslims, they said, you can have sex with your mother. I don't know how many of you downloaded those videos because they are priceless. Explain to you really what this cult is about. With no question. Can you hear me? Yes, mute YouTube, please. Sorry? Mute YouTube so we don't have double voice. What do you want to say to us, Mr. Yes. Russ? Why are you upset? You say you, 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 you said you said this Nothing guy is, is a fraud. Sin in heaven. Huh? Nothing is sin in heaven. Thank you very much. That's what I'm saying. In the heaven, you can have sex with the goat. It's fine for you, right? Not nothing sin. There's no nothing sin. You can sin. you yes. can have sex with your mother. Okay. Yes. Well, okay. So you can you are proud about having sex with your mother. You and your father, you will have sex with the same woman, which is your mother. Anything. Anything is fun. Everything comes from God in heaven. No problem. So in the heaven of Allah, you will have a threesome, you and your father and your mother in the bed. Okay. And you don't see that there's something wrong with that. And look how he say, okay. I mean, well, so what the problem? I look like a, he's a, 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 in the conversation here, the Muslim speaking to me as if I am the idiot. Like, why you don't understand? <laughs> why you don't understand, Christian Prince? What's the problem? I say to him, so in heaven you will have sex with your mother. So yes, he say yes. What you don't understand in heaven of Allah, there's no sin, right? Not nothing sin. There's no nothing sin. You can sin. you yes. can have sex with your mother. Okay. Yes. Well, okay. So you can you are proud about having sex with your mother. You and your father, you will have sex with the same woman, which is your mother. Anything. Anything is fun. Everything comes from God in heaven. No problem. So in the heaven of Allah, you will have a threesome. You and your father and your mother in the bed. Okay. And you don't see that there's something wrong with that. What do you not understand about nothing is sin? Well, I'm, sin I'm just trying to understand, my friend. You see, I'm not sin. smart we like listen. you. We think it's sin due to our social okay. structure. If, if, that, if that can make, I'm not trying to insult, by the way. I'm not trying to insult. Don't take me wrong, please. You know, I, I have not. I don't know you. you. Okay. No, I'm not trying to insult. If Zach and Nick, he want to have sex with your sister, and you like your sister, so are you willing you and Zach and Nick to have share to share your sister together? In this case, Zach and Nick mm -hmm. in heaven, mm -hmm. he would have a situation in which he could. He could. So you and your sister and you Zach and Nick in one bed. But it it wouldn't be my. It would be it wouldn't be my sister. Why not? In heaven. Think of it as anything can happen. Oh, well, anything can happen. So your sister, it's possible that you and Zach and Nick having sex with your sister in the same time. That's amazing pleasure. I mean, what they can say. This is beautiful, my friend. I'm really in touch. I've, I'm thinking now to convert to Islam. And can you tell me what is the wisdom behind this? Why? Why you, your sister and Zach and Nick and you in the bed and you don't see that there's something wrong with that? Why do you think there's no, nothing wrong with that? Look, okay. I, due, due to our social like structure and mm. morals, yes, mm. it's wrong. Mm. But when you get to heaven, anything can happen. Anything can happen. 
Mm. Yes. What if uh, what if somebody want to have sex with the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him? If it's in heaven, yes. So the Prophet he would take off his panty, he will bend over, and we will see somebody doing him from his behind. In my in my heaven, yes. Okay, that's wonderful. And uh, <laughs> did you hear it? Did you hear it? Even their prophet will be effed. In my heaven, yes. What the problem? Now, please download those videos, spread them around because those expose a lot of Islam. This is the link if you like to download and share around. You see, if I say those things from my own, you will not believe it. Those are Muslims, and they are according me, and they are upset, and they are defending their religion, and they claim that they are people of knowledge. Muhammad himself, he will bend over, and Muslims will be doing him. If this is not enough to prove to you that Islam is cult, I don't know what can prove it to you then. Right? I mean, I leave that to you. From their fruits, you shall know them. There is no sin in heaven of Allah. No sin. Well, I agree there's no sin, but you are doing sin there. I agree there's no sin should be in the heaven, but sleeping with your mother is okay. Sleeping with you, uh, uh, your sister is okay. The sleeping with your daughter is okay. Sleeping with the Prophet Muhammad is okay. Men sleeping together. No sin in Allah heaven. We got it. Thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And don't forget, please, to download the video and share it around. And until we see you again, this is the Christian Prince. I love you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.